Hello and welcome to Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. I'm glad you could join us on yet another episode of New Life Program. On today's show, we are having a fully packaged show and starting us off is a segment in the Health Talk with Maureen Opondo. Later on, we'll be joined by Pastor Kigundu Ndwiga on the Bible segment. I'm your host, Tileno Diambo. But first, let us be blessed with this song, I'm Coming to the Cross by Gracious Singers. Stay tuned. I am coming to the cross, I am poor and weak and blind, I am counting all my cross, I shall full salvation find, I am trusting all in Him, O Lamb of Calvary, humbly ask the cross I come. Jesus, send me now. Long my heart has sighed for thee, long has ever read within. Jesus, sweet, this speaks to me. I will bless you from a sin. I am trusting glory in thee. Welcome back. On today's segment of Health Talk, we are discussing on how one can be kind to their colon. In studio with me is Maureen Opondo, ready to take us through. Welcome, Maureen. Hello, listener. Our today's topic is Be Kind to Your Colon. There was just no question about it. Little Willie has been a very bad boy. He definitely needed to be punished. Several scolding and spanking had done little to help him to understand. He was only four years old. But of course, obedience is important at every age in life. It wasn't that he was naturally bad. No child ever is. But it was so hard for him to remember to be good. There were so many more important things for him to see and to do. But his constant forgetting was a source of annoyance to the whole household. Something just had to be done about it. This time, the family were determined to find a punishment that would help him to remember. Some meddling neighbor suggested a huge dose of castor oil. 
He was to be dearly purged of all his tendencies to forget. It was a cruel thing to do to anyone let alone to a child. Poor little Willie. He thought he'd die even at the thought of it. But his expirated parents forced the horrible stuff down his throat. The first dose he promptly brought up again, so down went another. It was a wicked thing to do, but many hapless youngsters have been made to suffer because his parents were angry rather than sensible. Untold damage can sometimes be done in the heat of the moment. Instead of having themselves under control, Willie's parents were angry and frustrated. They had lost their normal balance. Frustration had taken the place of good common sense. One thing was certain. Poor Willie will never forget that wretched experience as long as he lives. In his mind, medicine will always be associated with violence and anger. The emotional shock of that experience left a scar on his personality that will remain with him for the rest of his days. You see, those first years of life are the most important in the formation of character. So many parents foolishly determined to break the will of a child when they should be gently molding it for happy living and for real service to humanity. But this wasn't all that overdose of castor oil caused. Dreadful gripping pains all through that little boy's gastrointestinal tract. Poor Willie had to suffer from this ever since. Today he's a neurotic. Instead of living a free normal life, his mind is fixed on his elimination. His whole day resolves around the movement of his bowel. Whenever he is under any emotional strain, he suffers agony with constipation, all of which stems directly from the poor training of his early childhood years. Like almost every other baby, Willie was born with a perfectly normal colon. It worked quite well on the day he came into the world. There was no reason why it shouldn't have done so for the rest of his life. It was that cruel and absurd form of punishment and the foolish ideas of his parents that brought on the most of his trouble. Now he is suffering from a nervous and irritable colon which interferes with his business and success in life. The laxative habit once it had been started in a child may not be too easy to break. But unless it is broken, it will remain with him for the rest of his life. There is no question that far too many drastic laxatives are being used today. Certainly, such laxatives should never be used as a form of punishment. Some of these powerful laxatives contain large quantities of phenylphthalein and other drastic drugs, all of which may damage the kidney as well as the inner lining of the bowel. Sometimes, these drugs are made up in the form of chocolates. One little child found a box of laxatives chocolate and sat down to enjoy them. Within a few hours, he was rushed to hospital with severe dysentery. Next day, he was dead. Never forget there is always some danger in using drastic drugs, no matter how attractive they may look in the package. Sometimes, it may be necessary to use a strong laxative in the emergency, but such drugs should never be taken regularly. Even so mild a laxative as mineral oil has some drawbacks. Sometimes, it interferes with the absorption of certain very important vitamins. These are vitamin A, D, E, and K, all of which are essential to life and health. Nor must we forget that too much roughages may also retain the surface of the bowel, causing spams and gripping pains. The complete gastrointestinal tract is a wonderful structure. It is about 36 feet in length. It almost fills the abdomen from beginning to end. It is a long curving muscular tube, which is lined with a smooth velvet like inner lining called the mucous membrane. Many blood vessels and nerves supply the muscle and glands and the walls of the stomach and bowels. Powerful digestive juices from the liver, pancreas and smaller glands are constantly being poured into the gastrointestinal tract during the process of digestion. No factory on earth can begin to match the human digestive system in all its marvelous chemical function. There are muscles in the wall of the stomach and the intestine, but they are not like the muscle in your arm or leg. Your stomach muscle cannot be controlled by any voluntary effort in your part. They are entirely automatic. The nerves that control these muscles come from a different part of central nervous system. This automatic nervous system, as it is called, works in two ways. One part of it causes the bowel to squeeze down and contract. The other causes it to relax and rest. Both are necessary. But when one becomes overreactive, the whole digestive machine is thrown out of balance. 
This is what happens when a person is under some prolonged stress or emotional strain. Some years ago, Dr. W. B. Cannon showed how our emotion affect our digestive organ. Experimenting with cats, he found several tabby cats that would take the barium and then lie down and purr while he watched movement of their intestines under his X-ray fluoroscope. He found that when the cat was quiet and happy, its intestines would be smoothly contracting and relaxing in the normal process of digestion. But when a dog was brought into the room, the cat's whole digestive movement would cease and the bowel would become spastic. All the normal peristaltic movement would stop because of the fear and emotional strain in the mind of the cat. This has been demonstrated by X-ray many times in other animals and also in human beings. This raises several interesting questions. Does chronic constipation arise from constant family stress? Does it come from prolonged business worries? Is this the reason why chronic constipation is said to run in families? There is no question that when a person lives in constant atmosphere of friction, something very uncomfortable will soon be happening to his digestive tract. Family feuds are frequent cause of blocked bowels, a much more common cause than tumors. Sometimes the stress will bring on diarrhea rather than constipation. Proper relaxation of the bowel is always the best answer to the problem of constipation. A strong laxative rarely does any good. Sometimes a simple medicine that relaxes the bowel will often work wonders. Many a patient has been given some mild medicine for stomach trouble and later has exclaimed, "Why, doctor? That not only settled my stomach, it relieved my chronic constipation as well." What causes constipation? Nearly all cases of constipation are due to faulty bowel habits. For some reason or another, the individual has habitually neglected the call of nature. This may result in irritation of the large bowels. It may cause hemorrhoids and fissures. When these conditions are present, there is often pain and tenderness, so the patient unconsciously avoid having a bowel movement because of the pain. But the longer he delays, the worse it becomes. Thus, a vicious cycle is set up, which may result in complete rectal prolapse or dropping of the bowel. Another cause of constipation is not taking enough fluid during the day. It's surprising how little water some people seem to drink. This is very unwise. Other people fail to take bulky food in their diet. They choose food that are high in calories, such as sugar and pastries, and sweets and certain rich protein fruits. This is also a dietary blunder. Both bulk and liquid are necessary for proper functioning of the bowel. Then some people hold the foolish idea that a weekly cleaning out by some strong laxative is beneficial to the body. This is a bad habit for it usually is followed by 2 or 3 days of constipation and the normal rhythm of the bowel is disturbed. This then calls for stronger laxatives and more purging and so the miserable habit pattern is established and all too often it may continue for the rest of one's natural life. Parents should realize that strong laxatives irritate the bowel causing spasms and pain. They also disturb the chemical relationship within the body. There is no question that chronic constipation is a very common disorder today. It is one of the most frequent condition which physicians are called upon to treat. Here are four very important things that most doctors urge upon their patients in the treatment of this condition. First, remove the cause of the trouble. This includes family friction, nervous strain and chronic anxiety. Second, avoid the use of strong laxatives and enemas. These never correct the problem, they only alleviate it. Third, educate yourself in the principles of good living. Learn to eat plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables. Take your meals at regular times. Drink plenty of pure water between your meals. Four, do not neglect the call of nature. This is very important in safeguarding your health. If you will put these principles into practice, I believe you will eventually solve the problem of constipation. You will live a happier and healthier life and your mind will be free from worrying about keeping regular. It certainly pays to be kind to your colon, for with good care, it will serve you well all the days of your life. Dear listener, that was the health segment and you have seen some of the ways on how to be kind to our colon. Be sure to join us next time for another episode of the health segment, though with a different topic. 
For suggestions, comments, or views, you can write to us. Our postal address is Adventist World Radio, P.O. Box 42276, code 00100, Nairobi, Kenya. Or through our email address, awrnairobi at eku.adventist.org. We are taking a short break, but don't go too far. Pastor Kigundu Nwiga will be right back with the Bible segment. Let us listen to a song, I Love Him, by Gracious Singers, as we take a break. I'm trusting, only trusting, in Jesus day by day. I feel His presence near while pressing on my way. My soul is full of glory, and this my song shall be. I love my blessed Savior, because He first loved me. I love it, I love it, because He first loved me. I trust Him, I trust Him, wherever I may be. My soul is full of glory, I sing because I'm free. I love my blessed Savior, because He first loved me. I'm trusting, only trusting, in Jesus every hour. Who saves me by His mercy and keeps me by His power. I'll publish His salvation wherever I may be. With all my heart I love Him because He first loved me. I love Him, I love Him because He first loved me. I trust Him, I trust Him wherever I may be. Full of glory, I sing because I'm free. I love my blessed Savior because He was not me. I'm trusting, only trusting my Savior's hand to guide. I know His grace sufficient and has fallen not beside. My soul is on the mountain, my home beyond the sea. Oh, bless the Lord, I love Him, because He first loved me. I love Him, I love Him, because He first loved me. I trust Him, I trust Him, wherever I may be. My soul is full of glory, I sing because I'm free. I love my blessed Savior, because He first loved me. Pastor Kigundu is here to share with us the second part of the Macedonian factor. Welcome. Dear listener, today we continue looking at the example of the Macedonians and their generosity in the Macedonian factor part 2. You see, it is in our pathetic condition that the Macedonian example shines as a beacon light in deep darkness that we can be generous despite our many severe trials. The Macedonian example takes away any excuses we may want to give for our not giving generously to the cause of God. Indeed, like the Macedonians, we can allow the trials to teach us one important lesson, that this world is not our home and all that we possess, and that which passes through our hands is temporal. Our severe trials, more than anything, should challenge us to invest our treasure in heaven where moth, rust, and thieves cannot reach. There is something else Paul also tells us that the Macedonians were extremely poor. But they were not just poor. Paul underscores the fact that they were extremely, extremely poor. Paul seems to marvel that people who are so poor could be so generous. How generosity could abound in abject poverty was a miracle that Paul could only attribute to God. Well, it is true that among the Macedonians, there are those who are well off like Lydia. Indeed, in every place, there are few who are well off, but they are in the minority. Paul expressed this reality clearly when he told in 1 Corinthians... 1 verse 26 and 28 when he said, Brothers, think of what you are when you are called. Not many of you are wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. 
But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are. For those who are well off among the Macedonians and among us, Paul issues the following challenge in 1 Timothy 6 verse 17 to 19. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they'll lay up treasures for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. However, the Macedonian example speaks eloquently to many of us because poverty is rife in our midst. Many of our members are jobless, they have no roof over their heads, they have been displaced by war, and they depend on food from donor agencies due to prolonged droughts and the resultant famines. Overpopulations in our region leads to scarce resources shared among too many people. What compounds the fact is the fact that the scarce resources are divided among just a few people. The bottom line is that we serve the Lord from a position of abject poverty. When we look at our position, we ask ourselves, what can we give to the Lord when we are so poor? Dear listener, the Macedonian example answers that question convincingly, that despite our poverty, we can give generously to the cause of God, and we can give so with great joy. Indeed, it is not only the Macedonians who discovered the secret of giving joyfully and generously to God. The widow who gave two mites, and the widow of Zarephath had already embraced the Macedonian factor, giving all to the cause of God from their very meager resources. And the Lord, of course, blessed them abundantly. My favorite writer, Ellen White, has this to say, No greater test of faith than this could have been required of the widow of Zarephath. The widow had hitherto treated all strangers with kindness and liberality. Now, regardless of the suffering that might resort to herself and the child, and trusting in the God of Israel to supply her every need, she met this supreme test of hospitality by doing according to the saying of Elijah. Then she makes this powerful conclusion. The widow of Zarephath shared her morsel with Elijah, and in return, her life and that of her son were preserved. And to all who in time of trial and want, give sympathy and assistance to others more needy, God has promised great blessing. He has not changed. His power is no less now than in the days of Elijah. Dear listener, we may be suffering and undergoing many trials during this season of galloping inflation and depressed economy. We may be plagued with abject poverty, but the Macedonian example silences all our protests to giving generously. The example exposes all our hiding places and wipes away all our excuses until we are compelled to confess. It is selfishness and self-preservation that prevents us from giving generously to the cause of God. Dear listener, we have no excuse. One question begs to be answered. What made the Macedonians so generous and joyful that they needed no coercion to give? What made them plead urgently with the Apostle Paul to be given the privilege of sharing in the giving ministry? What was their secret? Dear listener, join me in the next presentation as we uncover the paradox of how one can be so poor and yet so generous. Hope you have been blessed through the Bible segment by Pastor Kigundu Ndwiga. Our postal address is Adventist World Radio, P.O. Box 42276, code 00100, Nairobi, Kenya. Or you can send us an email through awrnairobi at eku 
www.adventist.org. And until next time, it's goodbye and be blessed. I have been your host, Chileno Diambo. I am poor into the cross. I am poor and weak and blind. I am counting all but draws. I shall full salvation find. I am trusting all in Him. All the love of Calvary. Long as ever read within, Jesus sweetly speaks to me. I will bless you from a sin. I am trusting Lord in thee. O oh, the Lamb of Calvary, humbly on the cross above. If I give my all to thee, friends and time and earth is torn, soul and body thine to be, holy thine forevermore. I am trusting Lord in thee. in him I am I am every wit made whole glory glory to the Lamb Jesus comes he fills my soul of the dead in my heart I am every I love my blessed Savior.